On this episode, we will look at one of my more heartbreaking poems, Leave My Tombstone Untitled. But first, Law of Kenya, Penal Code, Chapter 63, S. Action 226. Attempting suicide is an offense. Therefore, I was just telling a story. The room was quite dark, almost empty. Just me and my laptop lying on my bed. I stand up and walk to the door, tiptoeing silently to lock it. It is almost as if I am afraid someone will knock and I will have to let them into my style. I walk back, jumping over the utensils piling on the floor. I sit down and look at my phone. 27 missed calls. Battery low. Mom calling. Thank God, the phone just goes off. I am relieved. I walk into the bathroom to take a look in the mirror. I cannot reconcile that I am the same person looking back. I am pretty good looking. Perhaps I should be done with it. What right do I have to think I deserve to be here? To think I am special? To speak my mind hell? To even exist? I am getting cold. I walk back to the bedroom, stroke sitting room, stroke kitchen of the bed sitter, or as people outside Kenya call them, studio apartments. I wear a sweater that is on the floor. I sit down on the bed staring at the wall for a few minutes. I check if the noose I had tied is functional enough. It is perfect. There is a moral to this story. I can attest since my Russian roulette with death, I am perceived as more interesting. People call me crazy to my face with a hint of admiration, maybe when I do something outside the norm, which is a good thing in comparison to being taken to a mental asylum. All mental health adverts, campaigns, characters in your favorite films must have washed off some of the stigmas, at least in the urban areas where we have access also to Western media. But as with everything in media, it becomes trendy. The rappers with colored hair, face tattoos have provided a useful simulacrum. Romanticizing our idols who have committed suicide has made sure the conversation evolves to bad mental health is a marker of creative genius. Mental health becomes bling, an accessory, an aesthetic that is replicable. It becomes high-end fashion that can be purchased at any mall you walk in. My point, however, is that the good intentions of sensitizing people on mental health issues have ended up being run through the capital machine. This has had the effect of branding common mental health issues as rich kid problems, attention sinking, indiscipline, and laziness. If you are poor, maybe it is the lack of money that is making you depressed, ignoring the numerous numbers of people who by all metrics could be perceived as highly successful yet have ended up taking their own lives. The rationalization of madness took the center stage, though in most cases it is the bad mental health that leads to the issues labeled as causes of bad mental health by the internet. My friend who found me on that day perhaps wore a facade of care and worry as he was telling another friend something along the lines of how worried they are about me. It is fascinating to know a clown. Like all circuses, it takes the freaks to participate alongside the audience in a freak show. I had the aesthetic already. My only worry was that a cry for help on the stage will be confused as part of the performance until it's too late. I am about to commit the worst sin. I am about to abandon my own life, just lie in bed and die. This compulsion to write dark things, thoughts or even feelings, maybe that is what has me living, giving me strength to keep going. But really, is it even worth it? I feel like for the longest time I have been screaming, 
and screaming and screaming and screaming but I already stopped drowning, I'm at the bottom of the sea, I stopped sinking, I can't breathe yet, I'm still feeling, I can't live yet, I'm required to keep breathing. What about this? It's really worth it. Up day in, day in, day in, and death keeps missing, left with no choices, my worth keeps dipping, my belief is gone, my will to life fleeting, only remaining with one instinct to jump from the tallest building without warning or any thinking, without crying for my family. My mother, she really loves me. I can't think of her without tearing. At times, she makes it really worth it. I am here, still scribbling, but very soon it is coming. I am waiting for my very last day. I can feel it. My pathology is exhausting. Please help me. I am tired of suffering, or at least help me. To die a little easy. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me, help me, I'm finding very few things really worth it, even my writing has lost all its beauty. <laughs> On a national scale, mental health conversations have been having some press around them. At the time of the recording, however, it is an election year, and as a result, most conversations are drowned. Mental health is no longer sexy. I do not believe it tests well with voters if the preferred candidate is associated with mental health discussions. According to a probably dated report by the WHO, 1,442 people attempted suicide between the years 2015 and 2018. An article by The Guardian dated 10th August 2021 cited another WHO report that by June of that year, 483 people had been reported to have committed suicide. You have to keep in mind these are reported cases in a country that has a law against attempting suicide. If I ordered a general to fly from one flower to another like a butterfly, or to write a tragic drama, or to change himself into a seabird, and if the general did not carry out the order that he had received, which one of us would be in the wrong? Section 226 of the Kenyan Penal Code carries a misdemeanor charge. I read a story in the Daily Nation of a guy who jumped from the sixth floor of an apartment building, ended up surviving, and still had to pay 200,000 shillings in fines. The best action that the president of Kenya took was to create a task force to investigate the extent of mental health cases nationwide. The task force gave recommendations. That's it. This highlights the superficiality of the mental health discussions. This country does not have any official mental health assistance hotline. The average Kenyan cannot afford regular sessions at the shrinks. A quick Google search on mental health help suggests organizations that have filled the gap at a cost that is very reasonable considering the costs of hiring the required professionals. But still, it's too much for any average Kenyan to take up the bill for themselves or family. I will argue the people of this country are a public resource and a public responsibility. Even a single death of a Kenyan should be noted with concern and looked into. If not, at least I hope Section 226 gets repealed sometime in the future and more campaigns run around the same to continue with the destigmatization in the country. For me, I have survived so far, despite having a lot of down days. Every day I try my best to find a reason to keep keeping on. As Kafka said, I spent my whole life resisting the desire to end. If you manage to find me in my little corner of the internet, I'm really glad you are here listening. I'm trying to be part of a community that can freely talk about conversations about mental health and later have an actual impact on the handling of different mental health cases by being a resource for inspiration and knowledge. To aid this, I'm requesting you to share the episode widely with people who like the content on the podcast. 